Hello everyone, hope you all are doing good. I am Anjana from LearnoHub, the free learning platform where you can study math, science and SST absolutely free at LearnoHub.com. In today's class, we are going to discuss ICC class 9 physics chapter 9, current electricity. We will be discussing about electric circuit and solve questions from exercise 9a. Are you ready for the session? Let's begin. Electricity. Electricity is a word that we use in our day-to-day -day life. Can you imagine a world without electricity? So you can see many devices here. All these devices run based on electricity. They are all dependent on electricity. Okay, first we have a washing machine. What is happening in a washing machine? That is when you on the switch, there is electrical energy. This electrical energy in a washing machine gets converted into mechanical energy. So we know the Law of conservation of energy. What does law of conservation of energy states? According to law of conservation of energy, energy can neither be created nor be destroyed but can be changed from or transformed from one form to another. So here you can see the electrical energy is getting converted into mechanical energy in case of a washing machine. Next when you take the case of a fan. Okay. In fan what is happening here again when you on the switch what is happening? The electrical energy is getting converted into Electrical energy is getting converted into mechanical energy. Here the blades rotate. So there is mechanical energy. Okay. Next in case of a bulb. What is happening? Here it is not mechanical energy. The electrical energy gets converted into. Electrical energy gets converted into light energy. What about. In an iron box, what is happening? Here again, electrical energy is getting converted into heat energy. Electrical energy to heat energy. Okay. Now, in case of a mixer grinder. Okay, in mixer, what is happening? Again, electrical energy is getting converted into electrical energy is getting converted into Mechanical energy that is the blades rotate. Okay, so mechanical energy. So we have seen many devices and in these devices there is an energy conversion happening. All of these works based on electricity. Only if electricity is there, only if electrical energy is there, these devices will be working. Okay, so what an idea about, so how important electricity is. Before discussing electricity in detail, we need to first understand what are charges. To get to understand about charges, we will start with a simple experiment. Here I have some pieces of paper in my hands. Okay. And I have a pen in my hand. So what I am going to do is, I am going to rub this pen on my dry hairs. Okay. You have seen this experiment before. Yes. So here I am rubbing my pen on my hairs. And what I am going to do is, I am going to bring this pen near pieces of paper. Okay, tiny bits of paper. So, what has happened? Here what happens is the paper pieces, tiny bits of paper will cling on to the pen. Why is it happening? So, here there is an exchange of charges happening. Okay. So, when I rub this pen on my dry hair, this pen is getting charged. Okay. This charge, charged pen is bought near the tiny pieces of paper. Okay. This is the reason why the charge object is attracting the pieces of paper. Okay, there are two types of charges. One is positive charge and the negative charge. Okay, so positive charge means we will discuss this based on the electrons. Okay, you know what are electrons? Electrons are negatively charged particles. Protons are positively charged particles. And neutrons, they are neutral particles. So electrons, we know they are negatively charged. Okay, if an object, okay, it gains electrons then it becomes negatively charged. Okay. If it is losing electrons, it becomes positively charged. Okay. So, here when I rub my, rub this pen on my hairs, what is happening? During the rubbing, charging is happening. Okay. That is, electrons are getting transferred from my hairs to the pen. So, the pen is getting negatively charged. So, this is how charging happens. Okay. So, two types of charges, positive and negative charge. 
So when a positively charged body is brought near another positively charged body, there happens repulsion. That is, they move away from each other. Okay. Now, a positively charged body and a negatively charged body, that is, opposite charges. Opposite charges we call unlike charges. And similar charges we call like charges. So, like charges, they repel each other. Whether it is positive, positive or negative, negative. Negative and negative bodies, when brought together, they will move away from each other. Okay, if you have a magnet, okay, if you have two magnets, okay, we know that when two magnets are both close to each other, either they should attract or repel, okay. So, initially, these are two magnets, okay. Here we have North Pole, here we have South Pole. Here we have North Pole and here we have South Pole, okay. So, when similar poles are bought close to each other, what happens? The magnets will move away from each other. Okay, so when this is kept in this way, that is south north, in that case what happens? They will attract because they are unlike poles. Okay, so here again positive and negative, unlike charges, they attract each other, like charges repels each other. Okay, so this charges, based on this charges, we can say about two types of electricity. The first one is static electricity. Static electricity. And the second one is the one we are going to discuss in this chapter, which is current electricity. Now, what is the difference? What does static mean? What does stationary mean? Okay, something which is at rest. Yes, so static means something that is at rest. So, electrons here will be at rest. And that, that kind of electricity is called a static electricity. Okay, now what about current electricity? Current electricity is because of the motion of electrons. Moving charges. Okay, here there are moving charges. No, the charges are not at rest. Here the charges are at rest. So, here in this chapter we will be discussing current electricity in which the charges are in motion. Okay, unit of charge. The SI unit of charge is Coulomb represented by capital C. Okay, then there are some smaller units of charges. First one is milli coulomb. Okay, milli means how much it is? 10 raised to minus 3 which means 1 milli coulomb will be equal to 10 raised to minus 3 coulombs. Now, the second one is micro. Micro is represented using the Greek letter mu. Okay, so micro means it is 10 raised to minus 6. Therefore, 1 micro coulomb will be equal to 10 raised to minus 6 coulomb. Okay, next is nano coulomb. 1 nc. Nano means 10 raised to minus 9. 10 raised to minus 9 is nano. Okay. So, 1 nano coulomb is equal to 10 raised to minus 9 coulomb. Okay. What is the charge of an electron? An electron, we said it is negatively charged and the charge of an electron is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb. Okay. The charge it is negatively charged. Proton is also having the same charge but it is positive sign. Positive 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb. In case of neutrons, they are neutral particles. Charge will be zero. Sources of direct current. There are two types of current. We will be discussing about them in detail. One is direct current and second is alternating current. Direct current is a current in which the magnitude, there will be a constant magnitude and it will always be moving in one direction. For example, when you take the case of a remote. Okay. Remote. Then when you take the case of a torch. So, how do you supply electricity in these cases? Here you can see a battery or a cell is used. Okay. You can see a cell inside a torch or a battery is used in case of a remote. So, here you can see that there will be sufficient current that is being supplied for the device to work. Okay. So, one day suddenly what happens? It will get completely discharged. So, you cannot use it anymore. Okay. So, cells, the main sources of DC current is or the direct current is the cells. Okay. When these cells are joined together, kept together, we form, it forms a battery. Okay. A cell will be having only a positive terminal and a negative terminal. So, current will be flowing from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. So, during this flow, it helps to light up the bulb inside a torch or the bulb in a remote. Okay, this is how it is working. So, cells are the source of direct current. Okay. So, when many cells combine together, it forms a battery. Okay. And direct current is a current. What is a direct current? Direct current is a current of constant magnitude which is always flowing in one direction. Clear? 
Now, what is happening inside a cell? We know in case of a washing machine, what is happening? Electrical energy is getting converted into mechanical energy. In case of a bulb, what is happening? Electrical energy is getting converted into light energy. In an iron box, electrical energy is getting converted to heat energy. So, inside a cell, what happens is chemical energy. There is chemical energy which is getting converted to electrical energy. So, this electrical energy is used to light up the bulb inside a torch or a remote. Okay. So, here the conversion is chemical energy. The stored chemical energy is getting converted into electrical energy. Now, how is the energy, chemical energy there? Okay. Here what happens is the electrolysis process you need to understand. Okay. So, first there will be an electrolyte. Electrolyte is a solution. Okay. Two roads will be kept inside this. One is a positively charged and the other one is negatively charged. The positively charged road we call the anode and the negatively charged one is cathode. Okay. So, in this solution, okay, a salt solution. So, electrolyte will be a salt solution. There will be positive ions and negative ions. Positive ions we call the cation and negative ions we call the anion. Okay. So, for here we have said that electricity flow is from positive terminal to negative terminal. So, for that here what actually happens is we have said in this electrolyte solution there are positive ions and negative ions. Positive ions will move to the negatively charged electron. Okay. So, these roads are the electrode. Two electrodes, cathode and anode. Okay. So, we have said this anode is positive and cathode is negative. Okay. So, here you can see the negatively charged ions. Okay. Negative ions. So, this negative ions are called anions and these anions will go stick to the anode. Why? Because it is positively charged. Okay. And the cations go stick to the cathode which is negatively charged. Okay. This process is electrolysis. So, electrolysis is actually happening in a cell. So, in a cell, chemical energy changes into electrical energy when it sends current in a circuit. Okay. Now, there are two kinds of cells. The two different kinds of cells are primary cell and secondary cell. So, the basic thing that you have to know about primary cell and secondary cell is that a primary cell is a use and throw cell. Use and throw. We cannot re reuse it. Okay. We cannot recharge and use it. When you come to the case of a secondary cell, a secondary cell is a rechargeable cell. Rechargeable cell. Okay, just keep this in mind. Now we will discuss about them in detail. First we will discuss about primary cells. These cells provide current as a result of irreversible chemical reaction. What does irreversible mean? Reversible means if a reaction happens in one, happens in one direction, the opposite direction also the reaction can be bought. Okay, this is a reversible reaction. Irreversible means here you know that a chemical energy is getting converted into electrical energy. Okay, so only this process will be happening. From that electrical energy, we cannot again produce the chemical energy. Okay, so here the chemical energy is getting converted into electrical energy. Now, the stored chemical energy when it gets over, which means the battery or the cell is getting discharged. Okay. There is no more charges remaining. Then it cannot produce electricity. Okay. These types of cells we call the primary cells. And these cells are non-rechargeable cells. They are use and throw cells. Okay. One time use cells you can see. Okay. Once it gets discharged completely, you cannot recharge it and use further. Okay. There are different types of primary cells depending upon the electrodes and the electrodes. So, we, we have discussed that in case of an cell. There are two electrodes. There is an electrolyte solution. Okay. So, when electric current flows, what is happening? The anions move towards the anode and cations move towards the cathode. Okay. So, different types of primary cells are first is simple voltaic cell. Examples. Okay. Simple voltaic cell. Second one, a Daniel cell. Just keep these in mind. Daniel cell. Then Leclanche cell. Fourth one, dry cell. So these are examples of primary cells. Okay, so primary cells or use and throw cells. Next, secondary cells. Secondary cells also provide current as a result of chemical reaction. But here, 
the chemical reaction is not irreversible chemical reaction it is a reversible chemical reaction the cell is first charged okay so during charging first the electrical energy is getting converted into chemical energy chemical energy okay this chemical energy gets stored inside the cell okay this stored energy okay when you connect it to a circuit what happens is the stored chemical energy will now get converted into electrical energy now this electrical energy is used for the device to work okay for example electric car in electric car there is a, a requirement of high current for that purpose this type of batteries can be used this type of cells can be used also uh, low current for low current devices for example toy telephone toy mobile phone in these cases you can use these types of secondary cells okay the when you compare it with the primary cell these cells they are rechargeable okay they are reusable once the charge get over what you can do you can like your mobile phones you charge okay once your charge it becomes zero percentage you go and charge your mobile phones the same thing here again while charging what happens if the electrical energy is getting converted to chemical energy chemical energy gets stored now the device can be used okay so when you charge okay when you keep your mobile phone for charging what is happening there you can see that the electrical energy is getting converted to chemical energy and charge is getting stored. The stored energy here is a chemical energy. When you are using mobile phone again, what does happen? The chemical energy is getting converted into electrical energy. Okay. So, this is what happens in case of secondary cells. Secondary cells, another name is accumulators. Secondary cells are also called accumulators. Example, lead or acid accumulator. Second is lithium, nickel or alkali accumulator. So these are the two examples. Secondary cells are also called storage cells because they are able to store the charges. Okay. Now let us compare primary cells and secondary cells. If you just keep these points in mind by comparing, if you will be able to remember the points better. You can write about primary cells and secondary cells and you just need to note some examples for them. Okay. The first point, chemical reaction is reversible. What type of chemical reaction is happening? This is the first point. In case of primary cell, the reaction that is happening, the chemical reaction happening is an irreversible chemical reaction. Only in one direction, the changes. Okay. Now, when it comes to a secondary cell, here the reaction, here the chemical reaction is a reversible chemical reaction in both directions. First, electrical energy to chemical energy, then chemical energy to electrical energy. Okay. Next, second point, chemical energy is converted into electrical energy when current is drawn from it. So, in an electrolyte solution, there are electrodes using the current. What is happening? The chemical energy is getting converted into electrical energy. What is the case of the other one? Electrical energy converts into chemical energy when current is passed. So, you are passing current. The first what is happening? That is just remember in case of mobile phone, what is happening? Electrical energy is getting converted into chemical energy. The same thing, electrical energy converts into chemical energy when current is passed. Here, this is the just opposite. Third point, it cannot be recharged. What about this case? It can be recharged. Okay, next, it's internal resistance. I will be discussing about internal resistance. And what is resistance? Resistance is the ability of a body. Okay, of a substance to resist the flow of charges. So internal resistance means the device itself will be having the external. You don't need to provide a resistor. The device itself will be having a resistance. Okay, that is to control the amount of charge flowing. Okay, in case of primary cell, this internal resistance is high. When you take the case of a secondary cell, this internal resistance is low. Next, it is capable of giving weak current only. Okay, they will be giving current which is weak current. Here both weak current that is low as well as high. We have said in case of a car we need high current. In case of a toy or in case of a mobile phone, toy mobile phone, you need a low current. So, it is able to provide weak current as well as high current. Next, it is light and cheap. Okay, it is of lightweight and it is cheap. It is readily available also. But when you take the case of a secondary cell, they will always be heavy and they will be costly okay that is a, if you uh, compare when you take the case of a, a battery that is used in a car you know that it is heavy now examples when you take daniel cell like lanche cell dry cell simple voltaic cells are examples of primary cells when it comes to the 
secondary cells it is acid accumulators which is lead accumulators then hide uh, lithium hydrogen battery then uh, lithium nickel accumulators all these are examples of storage cells or secondary cells now what is electric current so first we have done an experiment that is i use this pen to rub on my dry hair what is happening charging the pen is getting charged so here what has happened there is a transfer of electrons the body which is deficit of electrons will become positively charged and the body that gains electron if there is excess of electrons the body is said to be negatively charged okay so we know that when we take two charged bodies a uh, when you take two charged bodies the electrons can flow how can you make the electrons flow using a metal wire so we know that the metals are good conductors of electricity through metal wires electrons can flow so when you have two bodies okay you have a body that is charged positively and you have a body which is charged negatively so when you connect these two bodies using metal wires what is happening the electrons will be starting to flow from a body where there is excess of electrons to a body where there is a deficit of electrons okay this flow of charges we call the electric current so in simple words electric current is the rate of flow of charges okay rate of flow what does rate means we know that okay so in the starting chapters we have discussed this also what is velocity velocity is the rate of change of displacement rate of change of displacement means velocity is equal to displacement divided by time okay divided by time is what rate of means okay with respect to time what changes happening to displacement that is velocity with respect to well time what is happening to velocity that is called acceleration okay so here the rate of change of okay rate of flow of charges we call the electric current so we can write electric current is equal to electric current is equal to charge by time okay electric current is represented by the letter i i is equal to q divided by t okay so here to remember this you can just remember a word quit q u i t okay q u i t in place of u you can put the equal to sign then it becomes q is equal to i t replacing u with equal to q is equal to i t okay which means charge is equal to current into time current into time you can use capital i for current okay q u i t replacing with equal to q is equal to i t where i is the current and t is the time so you if you want to find how much charge is there you can multiply the current which is known and the time take okay now we know about scalar quantities and vector quantities when you take the case of a current current electric current it is a scalar quantity not a vector quantity what are scalar quantities and vector quantities scalar quantities are quantities which has only magnitude vector quantities has both magnitude and direction when you consider the case of electric current it has only magnitude no direction okay so in which direction does the electric current flow we know that when you take a cell okay it connected it is connected to a circuit always the charges the electrons will be flowing from a negative terminal to positive terminal reverse direction will be the direction of electric current so electric current will always flow from the positive terminal to the negative terminal okay positive terminal to negative terminal now when you consider the case of metals in case of metals the electric current is due to the flow of electrons okay in metals current flow due to the movement of electrons only electrons are participating here in which direction electrons move in the opposite direction you will be having the electric current flow okay now when you take the case of electrolytes electrolyte solution with electrodes when you take you will be able to see that positive ions are also there negative ions are also there both of them will be contributing to the direction of current okay so here we have said anions will be moving towards the anode cations will be moving towards the cathode okay so here what is happening in electrolytes current flow due to the movement of both the positive and negative ions okay we have said the charge of an electron e it is represented by e is equal to 
1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb negative charge. Okay. To find the total charge, when you take a cross-sectional area, how much charge is flowing? The total charge. Okay. We will have to consider if n is the number of electrons. Okay. So, here you can see n number of electrons are flowing. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 electrons are flowing. Okay. If you multiply the number of electrons with the charge of one electron, you will be getting the total charge. Okay. What is the charge of one electron? 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb. So, total charge Q will be equal to number of electrons into charge of one electron. Then what is the equation to find current? Current I is equal to Q by T becomes N E divided by T. Okay, number of electrons into charge of one electron divided by the time T. So, this is the case with the copper wire. Copper wire means inside a metal. Okay, now from the negative to positive, the electrons will be flowing in the opposite direction, there will be current. Now, when it comes to the case of an electrolyte, both positive ions and negative ions are moving and they contribute to the flow of current. Okay. So, here when you take in one second, so in one second, if N1 is the number of positive ions, so positive ions charge will take plus Q1. Okay. And there are N2 number of negative ions minus Q2. In that case, the total current I will be equal to, what is I? I is equal to total charge by time. Okay, here time we are taking one second. So, what is the total charge? It will be equal to N1 Q1, okay, plus Q1. And we can see that if this is the direction of flow of positive ion, this will be the direction of flow of negative ion. They will be moving in the opposite direction. Okay. So, we opposite direction, we have to put a negative side. Instead of adding, we will be putting a negative side. Minus N2 into minus Q2. Why minus Q2? Because the charge is a negative charge. Okay. So, this I will be equal to N1 Q1 plus N2 Q2. So, the total current in case of electrolyte can be determined with this formula. N1 Q1 plus N2 Q2 where N1 is the number of positive ions, Q1 is the charge of positive ion, N2 is the number of negative ions and Q2 is the charge of negative ion. Okay. So, this is the thing. Yes, you don't need to put the sign here to just add the magnitudes of the charges and the number of ions. Clear? Okay. So, this is the electric current flow in case of metals and the electrolyte. The difference. Okay. So, we got the magnitude of current. We have uh, determined how to find the magnitude of current in case of a metal or in case of an electrolyte. Now, how to find the direction of current? Okay. The rate of flow of electrons in a direction is called electronic current in that direction. There are two types of current. First one is electronic current and the second one is a conventional current. So, we have said in here negative terminal, positive terminal. Okay. So, negative to positive is the direction of flow of electrons. Okay. Which means the positive ions will be moving from the positive terminal to negative terminal. That is the opposite direction. This is the direction in which the positive ions will flow. In which direction positive ions flow? This will be the direction of the simple current or that is a normal current which is a conventional current. So, electronic current is a current which is flowing in the direction of flow of electrons. Okay. The rate of flow of electrons in a direction is called the electronic current. In which direction electrons are flowing, that direction you will be having electronic current. In the just opposite direction, that is the conventional current is in a direction opposite to the direction of motion of electron. If electrons move from left to right, then the conventional current or simple current, normal current will be in the opposite direction. That is in the direction in which the positive ions will be flowing. Okay. So, what, how to find the direction of current? Now, what is the unit of current? We know the unit of charge. What is the unit of charge? Unit of charge. SI unit of charge is Coulomb represented by capital C and the SI unit of time is seconds represented as small letter S. So, we have current is equal to, current is equal to charge divided by time. Okay. So, here unit of current will be equal to unit of charge which is Coulomb. Unit of time which is second. Coulomb per second is the unit of current. There is another unit from the name of a scientist which is ampere. Okay. 
This is a SI unit of current represented by capital A. So while writing ampere you have to put capital a small letter a because capital a means it is representing the name of the scientist and not the unit when you write the unit you should always use small letter a in the starting all these we have discussed in the first chapter okay so ampere is the unit of electric current okay so we know that what is charge charge we know the charge of electron is equal to 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb okay we have total charge Q is equal to number of electrons into the charge of one electron. Okay. So, when you take one coulomb, one coulomb charge, what is the number of electron? If the charge is one coulomb. Okay. What is the number of electron? Number of electron will be equal to total charge divided by charge of one electron. Okay, 1 coulomb divided by 1.6 into 10 raised to my, minus 90. So, you will be getting 6.25 into 10 raised to 18 electrons. Okay, so when do we get 1 ampere current? So, 1 ampere current is when 1 coulomb of charge flows in 1 second. Okay, 1 ampere is when, when the numerator and denominator is 1. 1 coulomb charge in 1 second you will be getting 1 ampere. 1 coulomb charge. When do you get 1 coulomb charge? 1 coulomb charge is when the number of electrons is 6.25 into 10 raised to 18 electrons and the charge of electron which is a constant value which is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb. So to produce 1 ampere current how much electrons are required? 6.25 into 10 raised to 18 electrons is required. Okay, only this much electron, if there is this much electron, in one second you can produce one ampere of current. Okay, now there are some smaller units. So, we have said smaller units of charges. What are they? Milli coulomb, micro coulomb, nano coulomb. So, similarly, we have smaller units for current as well. The first one is milli ampere. What is milli? Milli is 10 raised to minus 3, which means 1 milli ampere will be equal to 10 raised to minus 3 amperes and 1 micro ampere is equal to micro is 10 raised to minus 6 therefore 10 raised to minus 6 amperes. These are the units of electric current. Symbols used in circuit diagram. So when you draw a circuit diagram, electric circuit diagram for different components for example for bulb, for example other things like resistors, wires, switch for all these you will be using different symbols. Okay. Now, an electric circuit has different electric components connect to a current source. For example, a bulb. Okay. A bulb you will be representing in this way. This is how a bulb is represented. Next, a key. A key we will be representing in this way. To represent a switch. This is how we represent a switch. Okay. Next, if you want to represent a resistor. This is the symbol for a system. So, in detail we will be discussing about. So, uh, just understand for different electric components there are different symbols that is used in a circuit diagram. First symbol we are going to study is that of a source. There are two types of sources, direct current and the alternating current sources. So, alternating current sources mainly it is the mains that we are using at the household mains and uh, in case of uh, generators, electric generators, what is happening? Electrical energy is being produced. Okay. So in these cases, the mains, uh, the, these cases, alternating current is used. Now, when it comes to the direct current, DC current, DC current is mainly supplied with cells. Cell is the source or battery is the source. Battery is the source for direct current. Okay. So, we know the, uh, for example, in the laboratory, like Lange cell or Daniel cell or uh, lead nickel accumulators these are used as dc sources okay they, they provide the direct current so we have discussed in uh, brief about direct current and alternating current normally a cell okay a cell is represented with two lines of unequal length okay two lines of unequal length so this is how you will be representing a cell here this bigger line is positive terminal and the smaller line is negative terminal Okay, so we know that electrons will be flowing from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. This is how the electrons will flow. What about the positive ions? Positive ions will be flowing from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. 
okay and this will be the direction of the simple current or the conventional current okay. direction of current flow now this is how a cell is represented positive terminal negative terminal okay now you want more current more current means you from here how much current is produced the multiplied amount you need as current so in that case we will be using a battery battery is represented by two or three cells which are connected together okay so you have to remember if you are starting with positive it should end with negative okay number of cells will be kept together to form a battery so this is how a battery is represented for more current we need a battery with cell you can only produce small current okay next alternating source ac okay that is mains and generators that is represented by represented by a sine wave with a circle around it so this is how we represent ac current source okay. so these are the symbols used to represent dc current source dc current sources are cells and batteries and ac current sources are is a sine wave okay sine wave with a circle around it okay now the second one is key how do we represent key so why do we use key why do we use key key we all know in order to open locks we use the key yes so here in an electric circuit the key is used to allow the current to flow and not allow the current to flow okay when this key so this is the key okay when it is given here okay it is inserted into this what happens is the circuit becomes complete that is here there is a connection to so the metal the electric current is allowed to flow when it is open what happens the electric current cannot flow so here we will be discussing about three things first one is not normal plug key okay plug key this is a plug key then we have switch and the third is tapping key okay so symbol to represent a plug key plug key is normally used in case of laboratories and all plug key is used in physics labs if you go you will be able to see the plug key okay how to represent a plug key so this is a plug key okay it shows an open circuit which means the current is not flowing okay and in a closed circuit this is how it is represented that is when you insert this key current is allowed to flow okay which means you will have to put a dot over there okay next is a switch this is how you will be representing a switch okay now this is an open circuit in a closed circuit the switch will be in this way this is how a switch is represented next tapping key this is how a tapping key is represented okay closed circuit means this a tapping key it should touch here this is how it is represented so why is a key used key is used to show the flow of current in a circuit it is used to put the current on and off in a circuit to allow it to flow and to stop the current from flowing we use a key a resistance via rheostat or variable resistance normally a resistor is represented in this way this is how you represent a resistor okay so resistance wire is made up of manganese manganese is a material which is used to make a resistance wire okay and it is always having a fixed resistance for each resistance wire there will be a fixed resistance a fixed value will be there and this what is a resistance resistor's property is to control the current from flowing okay it will stop only the necessary amount of current will be allowed to flow and it is it will resist the other current to flow through so next first we discussed about resistance wire it has a fixed resistance so variable resistance or rheostat is a device both are same it has a change in resistance will be able to change the resistance to change the current okay current is dependent on the resistance so how much current should flow can be controlled using a rheostat or a variable resistor this is how a rheostat or a variable resistor looks like okay so the circuit symbol is either you can represent it in this way or this way both of these shows a rheostat or variable resistance so this is how it looks like okay so there will be an aspect of phi then you have a wire which is made up of constant thing okay you will be having an iron frame this is a brass rod okay and this is called joki and this joki will be moved to each side okay to control the current flow from flowing okay so when the joki is moved to one side what happens is the resistance value is changing okay the resistance value changes 
and the current that is allowed to flow also changes. So depending upon how much current should flow, we can adjust this too. Okay. So if we call this as a edge A and A and this as A or C. Okay. So here, when you bring this jogi to one end, what is happening is to A, if you are bringing, what happens is the resistance is decreasing. When resistance decreases, what happens to current? Current and resistance are inversely proportional, which means more current will be allowed to flow. So when you allow this juki to move to the other end, what happens to the end C? What happens? Here the resistance is increasing, which means the current flow is being controlled more. Okay. Only very less amount of current will be allowed to flow in this case. A rheostat is a device by which resistance in a circuit can be varied continuously. Continuously, you can change the resistance. But using a resistance wire, you cannot do this because for a resistance wire, there is a fixed value. For example, 40 ohms or 40 kilo ohms. This is a fixed value which cannot be changed. You have to change the resistance wire in order to change the resistance supply. A resistance box. A resistance box is provided with several res standard resistances, say 1, 2, 5, 10, 20 ohm connected in series between the two terminals. So, if you are asked to provide 5 ohm resistance, what you have to do? There will be somewhere a 5 ohm written. You will just have to remove that. Okay. Then 5 ohm is the resistance. If you are asked to provide 1000 ohm resistance, here you will be having 1000 ohm. Just remove this. So, there are different values for each. Okay. Here, there are many constant in coil. Constant is a material that is being used. So, constant in coils will be there. So, when you remove that particular key from there, that much of resistance can be provided. Okay. So this is a resistance box. So resistance box, why is it used? Resistance, the required resistance can be provided using a resistance box. Clear? A meter. We know that the temperature can be measured using a thermometer. To measure current, there is a device and this device is called a meter. Okay. And a meter is a device used to measure the magnitude of current flowing in a circuit. So how is an ammeter connected in a circuit? What is the symbol of an ammeter? The ammeter is represented by the symbol A surround, with a circle around it. Okay, it has a positive and negative side. Okay, this positive of the ammeter, positive terminal of the ammeter will be connected to the battery's positive. Okay, ammeter requires only very low resistance for its working. The positive side will be connected to ammeter's positive and negative will be connected to the battery's, uh, battery's negative will be connected to ammeter's negative. Okay, this is how the connection is made. Now, there are different types of ammeter depending on the current that is flowing. Okay, normal ammeter will be there. If the current flowing is very low, you will be using microammeters and milliammeters. So, this is how it looks like. This red shows the positive side of the ammeter. So, this positive should be connected to the battery's positive and the negative should be connected to whatever the device. For example, if there is a bulb, okay, then it should be connected to the bat, uh, connected to the ammeter's negative. Okay, so this is how it is. Now, when the current flows, here you can see the needle 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2. These are the values of in amperes of the current that is flowing. Okay, so when there is a deflection, it means this much amount of current will be flowing. Okay, for example, if it is at this point, okay, which means the current in the circuit is 1 ampere. You can adjust the amount of current using this device. Here. Next, microammeters and milliammeters. On microammeters, you will be having 0 microamperes, 100 microamperes, 200 microamperes, 300, 400, 500. In milliamperes, also the same way, 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. This is how the values are. Positive side and negative side will be there. Positive, this red color shows a positive and the black color shows a negative. Okay, that is about ammeter. What is ammeter? Got it? It's a device to measure the current. Next is voltmeter. Okay. So, we know that when you take two things, for example, you have a beaker which is filled with water. Okay. There is a hole at here and you have a vessel here. Okay. We know that this is at a higher level and this is at a lower level. You will be able to see when you connect it with a pipe, the water will be flowing from here to here. It means from higher to the lower. Okay. So, this is how the current will also flow. When you take the positive and negative terminals of battery, battery will be having some voltage. Okay. Which means from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, that is from higher potential to lower potential, the current will be flowing. Okay. Now, the voltage 
can be measured using the device called voltmeter. Voltage or the potential difference between the terminals can be measured using a device called voltmeter. So we have said that a meter is connected in series. We have seen, so here there is a battery and a meter is connected, positive and negative of a meter. Then you will have the device. This is how the circuit, simple circuit will be. Okay, a meter is connected in series. Series means continuously connected. Battery, battery is one end is connected to a meter is one end. A meter is other end is connected to the bulb and bulb end is connected to the battery. So this is how the connection is. Now when it comes to the case of a voltmeter, voltmeter will be connected in parallel, which means here you have the battery, here you have the device, here you have the meter. Voltmeter will be connected in parallel to the device. Positive and the negative will be there. Okay. So here you have to remember in case of a meter, we said the resistance will should be low. Only if resistance is low, current will be able to pass through the ammeter and will be able to get the proper reading. But when it comes to the case of a voltmeter, for voltmeter, what is why it should be of high resistance. The resistance should be high so that the current does not flow through. Okay, these are the important difference between a meter and voltmeter. Why they are used? Voltmeter in a circuit is used. To measure the magnitude of potential difference between two points of a circuit. Okay. Similarly, similar to the case of ammeter. Okay. In case of ammeter, we have said there is milliammeter, microammeter. In case of voltmeter, also there are millivoltmeter, then microvoltmeter. Which one is required? You will be able to use them. Okay, next one is galvanometer. So, ammeter, voltmeter we have discussed, ammeter to measure current and voltmeter to measure voltage or potential difference. So, when it comes to the case of galvanometer, it is not to measure but to detect the presence of current or to understand the direction in which the current is flowing. Okay, so when it comes to the galvanometer, we have seen case of ammeters and voltmeter, here the starting reading will be zero. Here the zero will be in the middle. Zero means no current. Okay. If the needle is at zero, it means there is no current. When it deflects to the positive or to the negative, which means the right side and left side, there is some reading, there is some current and the direction in which the current is flowing can be shown with the help of this deflection. When the circuit is complete and you put the key, if there is sudden deflection in the galvanometer, it means the circuit is complete and the current is flowing through the circuit. So, galvanometer is represented in this way. There is no positive or negative sign because it is used to, just to, to, just to understand if there is current is there or not. Okay, just the deflection shows if there is a flow of current or not. Okay, presence of current can be detected using a galvanometer. So, understood, this is how a galvanometer looks like. It will be negative, positive and all will be there, but the sign is not important. You can just connect it both the ways that is possible. Clear. Load and connecting wire. Load is a device that is connected to a circuit. For example, a bulb or a resistor. The appliance which is connected, we call it a load. Okay. Bulb is a load, a resistor is a load, then a heater is a load. The device which is connected, we call the appliance which is connected in a circuit is called a load. Okay. Next is connecting wire. So we have discussed about many devices. There is a source, there is a key, there is a resistor, a meter, voltmeter, galvanometer. So all these devices should be connected. Okay, we know that metals are conductors of electricity. So, metal wires, we know metal wires can take the current from one point to other point. Okay, so these devices can be connected. These different appliances can be connected using metal wires. And these wires we call the connecting wires. Normally, metal copper wires, metals such as copper or aluminium wires are used for this purpose because they are good conductors. Okay, these wires should be having low resistance, it should not resist the current to flow, it should allow the current to flow, okay. So, low resistant devices should be used. You can use thick wires, mostly thick wires are used or fine wires which will be twisted, okay. These uh, wires can also be used. So, these thick wires will be connected. Normally, uh, you have seen insulated copper wires, okay, green color, then blue, yellow, these insulated copper wires are used as connecting wires in the case of circuit. Let us take an example. A conductor carries a current of 0.2 amperes. First question, find the amount of charge that will pass through the cross section of it in 3 seconds. Sorry, 30 seconds. Okay. 
So here time is given, current is given. Current I is equal to 0.2 ampere. Time T taken is equal to 30 seconds. So you can find the charge. What is the relation? Q is equal to I into T. If I is equal to Q by T, then Q is equal to I into T. So Q is equal to 0.2 into 30, which is equal to 6 coulomb. So the second part, how many electrons will flow? In this time interval, if charge on one electron is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb. So, you have to find the number of electrons. We have charge Q is equal to number of electrons into charge of one electron, which means number of electrons will be equal to total charge divided by charge of one electron. Total charge here is 6 coulomb divided by charge of 1 electron 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs which is equal to on dividing this you will be getting a value 3.75 into 10 raised to 19 electrons you are asked to find the number of electrons therefore uh, there are 3.75 into 10 raised to 19 electrons flowing in this time interval if charge on one electron is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb. Now let us solve questions from exercise 9a. Question 1 of exercise 9a. A charge 0.5 coulomb passes through a cross section of a conductor in 5 seconds. Find the current. How to find current? We have current is equal to charge divided by time. Okay. So here I is equal to Q by T. What is the value of Q? Q is equal to 0.5 coulomb. Time T is equal to 5 seconds. Therefore, current I is equal to Q by T. 0.5 divided by 5 which is 0.1 ampere. So, the current that is flowing is equal to the magnitude of current is 0.1 amperes. Question number 2 of exercise 9a. A current of 1.5 ampere flows through a conductor for 2 seconds. What amount of charge passes through the Conductor. We have to find charge here. So, what is the relation? Charge Q is equal to current I into time T. Here current I is 1.5 ampere and time taken T is equal to 2 seconds. Therefore, Q is equal to 1.5 into 2 equal to 3. Okay. 3 coulombs is the charge. Charge that passes in the conductor is 3 coulombs. Here we have the last question for today. Question 3 of exercise 9A. When starter motor of a car is switched on for 0.8 seconds, a charge 24 coulomb passes through the coil of the motor. Calculate the current in this coil. How to find current here? Charge is given. Charge Q is equal to 24 coulomb time T is equal to 0.8 seconds. Then what is current? Current I will be equal to. What is current I? Q divided by time. Okay. It is current is the rate of flow of electric charges. Okay. Which is equal to 24 divided by 0 0.8 equal to 240 divided by 8 which is 30 ampere. So, the current is 30 ampere. The current that flows through the coil is 30 ampere. That's all for today. In today's class, we have discussed about current, what is current and we have also discussed about the different components of an electric circuit and what are their circuit symbols. We also saw questions from exercise 9a. Hope you all enjoyed the session. I'll be back in the next session. Until then, stay tuned to Learn Hub. Learn Hub free hai, par best hai. Thank you.